Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Promenade by Ta Te Wu. In the game Promenade, you'll be playing two to four players, about 45 minutes to an hour and a half roughly, and is for ages 10 and up. And you're basically going to be buying, selling, and putting up paintings in this game. There's going to be a gallery, there'll be your hand, you'll be utilizing a deck building strategy of sorts, and you'll also be utilizing paintings uh, to do different things in the game. As you uh, complete exhibitions, you'll be getting these cards done and utilizing them for bonus victory points at the end of the game, and if you're able to score enough points at the end, you'll win. All right, let's go take a down look below and I will show you what the game looks like and how to set it up. So here we have the game Promenade and everything included. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff in this game. And I went ahead and set it up for two players, but it can play up to four. And these are all the colors that you can choose. There's pink, yellow, green, and blue, which may or may not change based on the Kickstarter. You're also gonna get 10 cards to start the game with. You'll get these five paintings, one of each color, as well as these specific uh, gold cards. There's two twos and three ones. And they have certain abilities on the bottom that will do different things if you discard them from the game when you go to use use them. You're also going to have this board out and you're going to take these specific numbers here, one through eight, and you're going to randomly shuffle them up and place them down randomly here. The rest of them will go in order from uh, the lowest to the highest, along with the 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, and 15 here, making it the track of the game, uh, in which case basically things are going to get more expensive as the game progresses throughout. You're also going to set up one of your meeples uh, for each player in the zero space of the victory score point area, which will go all the way around the board to get to 100 points. And you can set two meeples over here, so that way whenever you make your first painting in the gallery or the museum here, you'll be able to take one of these specific abilities, which is maybe minus three to the cost, minus two to victory points, or one. Everything that has this symbol here is a victory point, which means you can go ahead and move up this track here based on that number. Anything over here is going to be the um, subtraction of cost or simply a gold value of some kind. You're also going to take six wild blacks and three of each color and put them in this bag over here and randomly put them down on this track here. There's five here, four, four, three, and three, which will cover all the cubes. The rest of the cubes they're gonna be utilizing are gonna be over here on your player boards, which actually have an indication of the different colors you'll be utilizing, uh, which is one of each. It shows you the value of them on your board specifically, but additionally, there'll be the value over here on this board so you can keep track of it pretty easily. You'll get your deck as well as one of these player reference cards uh, that you can go ahead and utilize, it explains the game. And you will also be additionally placing up your gold cards over here that you can go ahead and purchase. They do different things as well. So you can go ahead and take your deck of cards and you're going to go ahead and shuffle it. And you're going to go ahead and make sure everybody has their own unique shuffle going on here. And then of course their player boards. I'll just go ahead and utilize one to show you basically how a turn is going to go. But uh, you're gonna have your draw pile here. So we went ahead and shuffled up our deck sufficiently, placed it on our draw pile, all of our paintings are worth one currently and uh, we're gonna also take our deck here that we shuffled up of paintings and place them based on these this number here there's gonna be three paintings that go here there's going to be three that go here there's going to be two that go here and there's going to be two that go here which you'll be able to utilize at the cost of whatever these little cubes are Ooh, I dropped let me move this cube over which is a six Okay, so now you're ready to go. You're gonna draw your hand of five cards and you're gonna take one, uh, two of three different actions. You can choose to haggle, which is spending one card, uh, which will be placed on your action area here, to then be able to draw two cards from your deck. Or you can go ahead and acquire, which is buy one card in uh, the promenade, which is over here, and it tells you the cost of them. So if I wanted to, I could spend two, four, five, and six as one action, placing it over here. That would be my one action. And then I could spend six to pick up any one of these three paintings. Or additionally, I could just go ahead and spend one to pick up one of these. You could, of course, acquire twice on your turn for both of your actions, but you cannot acquire in both of the museums or galleries, I should say. Uh, if you want this one, this one you can pick them up but you cannot take both of these because they're in the same gallery so be aware of that the cost is going to be different so you can't pick up two ones which is probably what you'd want to do right so i'll go ahead and do my first action i'll go ahead and buy this which will go into uh this space over here basically which signifies my first action and then my second action if i wanted to i could spend six which is of course this is worth one right now it shows you here on this track as well as over here 
And uh, I can go ahead and discard all of these into my second action and then pick up another blue one if I would like. Whenever you buy a painting, you're going to go ahead and move the track up based on this number here. This is always going to signify this track. So for the first painting, it is uh, the one for three. So I'll move this up three. And then of course I bought the blue one again, which means I'm going to go ahead and move it up two more spaces, putting it at five. Every time uh, the, these little markers get to certain points on the track, it will increase the value of the paintings that you can go ahead and utilize to uh, buy certain things or put them in galleries or buy certain gold. Additionally, it will increase the value of them for end game scoring uh, victory points. So one is going to be at the uh, 10 area, one through nine, two will be at 20, three will be at um, the 30 and so on and so forth. Additionally, whenever you buy these gold cards, it'll be three or six, depending on which ones you buy. And that will also increase in gold costs and at the end of the game depending on what this gold marker is maybe gold will be worth for every three gold you get one point for every five gold for every two gold you get a point one for one two for one three for one so basically where you end this tracker is where depending on how much gold you have will score you certain points and that is basically how this tracker works so i moved this guy up here i've done both of my actions so these were going to go ahead and go to the discard pile and then i would go ahead and uh, take my draw pile and that's going to get me my five my five new cards everybody else is also going to then go ahead and go. After everybody's turn has been gone, I get another chance to go on my turn again, and I can spend now these guys here. And unfortunately, blue still hasn't increased in value, but I can go ahead and buy gold. I could buy these paintings again. And additionally, I could also go up here and buy these things here. Let's talk about this board over here. If I want to place one of my paintings in these areas here, I'll need to spend the cost, and then I will also increase that painting's uh, value up on this market rating track. So it'll go up on this track here. Additionally, I can only place paintings down or, that are these colors. So when I play a purple one down, this is going to go away. I will also place my color on here, signifying that that is my painting. And I will only then be able to play, or anybody else, be able to play colors that are left over here. So for instance, another one could be played that is blue, in which case somebody could put their color here and that would lose the blue one, and so on for green as well as yellow, which would be these guys here. And then, of course, this black one here is a wild, signifying that it can be any painting that you want. At the end of the game, based on if these are removed or not, will signify whether this happens or not. And there's different things that can happen throughout the game at the end of the game, but based on scoring and whatnot, depending on whether or not these are removed. Now, if none of these are removed by the time the game is over, then the one that has the least amount remaining is going to be the one that you're going to associate with getting points. Uh, the ones that are green here are going to signify things that happen in this museum, and the ones that are purple will basically be cards in hand or cards in your deck and whatnot. So for instance, this one says the genre that has the least paintings in the museum, all those paintings will be worth five plus victory points or plus five victory points. Pretty good. This one over here says the player with the most landscape paintings will get six for the first place player. Uh, second will get three and uh, third player will get two points. So if the end of the game, if all of these are removed and all of these paintings are there, then you are going to have both of these enacted for end of game scoring, which is pretty useful, right? And that is basically how the game is going to go. You'll be utilizing your actions and placing cards down in these two action spaces. When you have no draw pile, you'll take your deck and you will go ahead and shuffle it up and begin again. When you draw cards from this area here, if at any point one of these spaces has no more paintings left in it, you're going to then remove this little token here. You're going to place the next one down on this line there, and then you're going to fill up that space. So for instance, this one here, we get these three. And additionally, any of these extra ones here that do not have are not fully filled like so for instance this one's supposed to have three you're going to put one down for each of them but if so if both of these were gone as well you would put one more down for each of these as well signifying that you're going to be basically continuing the uh, trend of keeping the galleries full of paintings that you can go ahead and choose to pick up and whatnot uh, another thing that's of interest in this game is when you're utilizing your cards for gold specifically there are certain things that your gold can do uh, this one says you can spend this to re you can remove this uh out of from the game and use it for four coins as opposed to two, but you'll have to use it to buy one painting. Um, there's also special ones like over here, this three over here. It's going to cost you six, and you can use it for three whenever you play it. But if you want, you can 
discard it from the game and use it for eight to buy one five gold card. So you can go ahead and just pick this up along with spending two and you'll get this five gold card, which will be useful throughout the game. Additionally, there's another one here that says if you use this card discarding it, it will give you eight and you can buy one or two paintings in the same gallery as opposed to having to buy one in each separate for the actions. So that can be pretty useful as well. And that's basically how the game's gonna go. The game is going to end when either A, this deck has been depleted, or when this marker, these markers have advanced. So for instance, if it looks something like this, once, once this marker here reaches 70, everybody will finish their turn up and the game will end as well. And then the final way is if uh, the exhibit has 12 paintings or more in, in this area here, in which case the game would end the, the final player's turn. Don't forget, remember, when these markers are up, so for instance, in this case here, we'll go ahead and just show you on this board here, we have a green that is gonna be at three value. So whenever you play a green painting, it'll be worth three. We have a purple that's at five here. We have a red that is also at five. We have the blue that is going to be worth six. And we also have the yellow that will be at six. So playing cards for paintings, for whatever reason, like this red one here is gonna be worth basically a gold five card. And this blue one here will be worth a gold six card when you're using them to spend to place paintings down. So in this case, it'd be pretty easy. You could spend basically uh, this one and, that's oh, not a yellow, this is a gold card, but this one and this one, that's a blue for six and that is a red for six, that's 12. I can then use that 12 gold to place a purple one here, removing this one here, moving the purple up on the track five and also um, then you're going to be getting nine victory points for placing this painting here eight for the next one eight for the next one seven and then seven and you just move your tracker up like that that's basically how the game works hope i give you enough understanding of how the game functions let's come up and talk about promenade and what i think about it so let's talk about Promenade and the caveats. And the one I have is when you go to purchase, place a painting down in the museum, you're gonna get these cubes and remove them. So if there's a yellow cube, you can place a yellow painting there. If there's no yellow cubes or, bl or black cubes that are wild, you can't place a yellow painting down. And to signify that you've gained the points for it, you're gonna take the cube and place it on the, on, on the victory point uh, token area in which you're placing the painting. So if there's five and there's no paintings there, you place on the first one, you'll take that cube and place it on the first one as well. But it, you don't necessarily need to do that, but it does help in how the game works for scoring. It makes it easier to know which is the next available amount of victory points in each of those different exhibitions in the museum. Uh, that's it. Now, also I gotta mention that there's banging going on. That's because it's really, really windy here, but I really want to get this video out to give you guys an idea of uh, what the game's gonna be like and have you guys check out this game because Promenade is really, really fun. It is a partial uh, control as to like how you want to manipulate your cards and make them more valuable. Do you want to get a lot of blue? Yeah, because then you're gonna make blue more valuable and then the game will score you points. But also putting blue down in the exhibitions might be helpful. Maybe you want to score as many points in your deck uh, by increasing the value of those cards and then using those cards to get rid of paintings that are not worth as much. So that way you can place them in the galleries or the exhibitions down here in the museum. And that is also gonna score you points. So you want to try and open up the victory point conditions at the, for the end of the game scoring with these little guys here, as long as they help you. If they don't help you, it can be hurtful for you to open those up because somebody else can gain points as opposed to you. And you have options as to how you wanna score points. You can do a little bit of everything. You can focus on the museum, you can focus on getting up your the cards in your deck in higher and higher value that all kind of plays a role in it you want to go the gold route in which you're trying to get your gold value increase as much as possible and utilize those or simply stick with paintings and what's nice too is these little cards like i said before there's a, a bunch of different types of them and you can kind of interchange them i believe um I think I might have all the stuff in the game, but who knows what extra stuff is in the Kickstarter. Overall, it's a really fun game. It looks great. There's a ton of great paintings in this game. If you like painting style games, this is definitely one I'd check out. It has a slight deck builder aspect to it, or a decent amount of deck builder in it. And it's nice because it doesn't feel like every other deck builder I've played. This one is very, very different in the fact that you're utilizing your cards as basically currency to gather more currency as the game goes on and watching how other people are gathering their currency and increasing the value of their paintings. The, the theme is not sticked on here or pasted on. This theme is actually really ingrained in this game. I would actually say that they were like, I want to make a painting game and I want to make it good and this is how I'm going to do this game. That's kind of how I imagine this game being done. Uh, I really, really like this game. I think most people 
people who enjoy a slight deck builder, a little bit of management as far as how you're going to be controlling your deck and gaining more points in it. And then additionally, the museum aspect where you're trying to control how other players place and what paintings they use. And, oh, he just bought a red, and I know that there's only one red in this area left for this specific exhibition. I'm going to place there first. Even though it hurts me a little bit, it hurts them more, and they're in first place. There's a lot of stuff going on that has you thinking pretty dramatically in this game. I think it's probably his biggest game he's done so far, and it's the only one I've played so far, so I couldn't tell you which one to pick up other than the fact that this game is really, really good. I strongly suggest you take a look at Promenade, currently on Kickstarter. It's a really fun game.